What's up you guys? Today we're going to be talking about something that has been like plaguing the fashion community for the past couple weeks. Um, and it's a really big important topic and so I wanted to give like a dedicated video to one, educate people on like the whole rundown of what's been happening up until today and two, um, to open the discussion of how we as a community even move forward from all of this. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Ishii, I upload videos whenever I feel like it, but I do have a schedule that I try and adhere to, which is two or three videos a week, um, and I make videos about something that I love, which is high-end luxury fashion created by world-class artisans. Okay, so if you love that too, then you go ahead and you subscribe. So obviously, before we get into this, there is going to be the topic of child abuse, child pornography. Um, so if that's not something you're comfortable with, this might not be the video for you. What has happened? Basically, Balenciaga has been caught up in this PR nightmare where their campaign has been believed to be linked to imagery of the abuse of children. And so this began November 16th, 2022, Balenciaga launches their holiday campaign. This campaign specifically was shot by Gabriel Gallimberti, and he's known for images of people with their possessions. One of those being, I think, called Toy Stories. So this was very like modeled after that. And then the second campaign was for their 2023 campaign, and it was in an office setting. This was shot by a completely different photographer, as we'll get into later. However, the issue with both of these is that one um, featured children holding what seems to be teddy bears wearing BDSM-inspired accessories, and the other campaign featuring documents from a legal case called the United States versus Williams, in which the Supreme Court decided that the distribution or advertisement of child pornography was not protected by the First Amendment, AKA free speech. So more information about that document. This case was of our Mr. Williams, who after being searched with a warrant, was found to have two hard drives containing illegal material of children performing sexual acts. He pled guilty to the possession of child pornography. However, he pled not guilty to the charge of pandering child pornography, which means essentially when he was being like, talked to by an undercover cop they were like trying to exchange photos and he had told them that he would give them photos in exchange for ones that they had i guess he was trying to like limit the amount of punishment that he would get by saying that simply talking about exchanging materials is not necessarily illegal as we're having them is illegal right um, this went to like two different courts and then when they got to the Supreme Court, they decided that advertising child pornography, whether or not you have it in your possession, is still an illegal act, which is not protected by free speech. Obviously, the campaign drops, people immediately are outraged, as they should be, and on November 23rd, Gabriel issues a statement emphasis on statements, not an apology, <laughs> where he says, as a photographer, I was only and solely requested to lit the given scene and take the shots according to my signature style. As usual for a commercial shooting, the direction of the campaign and the choice of the objects displayed are not in the hands of the photographer. Um, he then goes on to say that if you were to search for pedophilia on the internet, you would find images worse than the ones he took. Interesting choice of words. <laughs> and then he further clarifies that the photos um, containing the legal documents were shot by another photographer and not by him. So he's really just trying to not be caught up in this. 
if I was hired to go do a shoot and I showed up, right, and there was like literally like a minor holding a vibrator, I wouldn't shoot it, right? And like, I can totally maybe empathize with him on not understanding maybe what he was shooting because when i first saw the images honestly i didn't think much of it and it wasn't that i was like oh i don't care but i just didn't really draw the connection between bdsm and the teddy bears obviously upon further inspection and really like looking into it after having other voices you know speak out i was able to see that more clearly. I'm not someone that's in the BDSM community, so that's probably one of the reasons why it didn't really strike a chord with me when I first saw the image. So after about a week of just people rioting on the streets of the internet, Balenciaga finally issues an apology on an Instagram story. So basically they sent out an apology and it was to say that they made a mistake by featuring children um, alongside their plush bear bags and that they should have never been together and they also wanted to issue a follow-up statement a few hours later that the inclusion of the Supreme Court documents mentioned earlier were not known to Balenciaga to have appeared in that campaign and that they were set there by the production company that Balenciaga had hired. On November 25th, Balenciaga files papers in the New York courts initiating a $25 million lawsuit against campaign production company North Six and set designer Nicholas Desjardins, who also worked on the Beyonce Renaissance cover art work. Balenciaga also claimed that the Supreme Court papers were placed um, in the photographs without their knowledge, and that they had led to false associations between Balenciaga and child pornography. Now, throughout all of this, everyone has sort of been wondering, where is Kim Kardashian? She has been a known advocator and public muse for Balenciaga. Every single custom look that she wears is head to toe, you know, custom Balenciaga. So obviously she has very deep ties with the company, and whether or not she was involved in this campaign, people are expecting um, some sort of public statement from her. On November 26th, Kim Kardashian releases this statement. I have been quiet for the past few days, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaigns, but because I wanted an opportunity to speak to their team to understand for myself how this could have happened. As a mother of four, the safety of children must be held with the highest regard and any attempts to normalize child abuse of any kind should have no place in our society, period. Um, and then she goes on to say that she is reevaluating her relationship with the brand, which I think means we're taking a short break while they figure out how to save themselves from this mess. The business of fashion then announces that Demna, the creative director of Balenciaga currently, um, was supposed to receive the Global Voices Award, but they would be revoking that honor. However, they would be offering Balenciaga the opportunity to address the situation in which they declined. So the latest news as of December 2nd, 2022, Demna finally offers his own personal statement after a very, what feels like an eternity of all of this. And he personally apologizes for the wrong artistic direction and concept of the gifting campaign with kids, and he takes responsibility. He then says that he would never have the intention to do that with such an awful subject as child abuse, and that he intends to learn from this, engage with organizations, and that he again apologizes and hopes to not make the same mistake again. Now, along with that, Balenciaga also releases their list of initiatives as a company, which they will take moving forward. Those being new departments within the company, I guess, for evaluating the nature of their content, um, hiring experts on diversity, sustainability, and also an external agency that will assess and evaluate what they put out moving forward. They've also reorganized our image department, which I think is code for we fired them hoes. <laughs> 
uh, they'll no longer be going forth with their lawsuit, which I think is very smart on their part because at the end of the day, like this was their campaign and they put it like the the image came from within. Like you don't go to an external company and have them create like your concept for spring 2023 because they're not a fashion company. You bring the fashion, you bring the fantasy, they bring the props and the set. And really at the end of the day, like it wasn't that document specifically. Like I think if that document was found, it would have been weird, but you wouldn't have been able to tie it to anything. But the fact that it was there as this sort of like extra little tidbit, like, oh, if you find this, you know, and then you can link it together. And it was just, it was weird. They're also donating money to different organizations, which is nice. Uh, and then they're going on a listening tour, or I suppose apology tour. Well, they will be engaging with advocacy groups who aim to protect children and you gonna happen in 2023 at some point we are going to be getting images of kim kardashian in a $250,000 Balenciaga haute couture gown in a kindergarten classroom reading the very hungry caterpillar and the caption is going to say save the children and i just know that's going to happen and i'm already tired of it <laughs> Now, personal thoughts and opinions on this, I mean, I just think it's really uncanny, the different ways that this campaign was connected. I just think it was so well thought out and planned and detailed, and that for me is what really like scares me about it, is that it just felt really thought out. I don't feel like he... I don't feel like he wanted to advocate for child abuse him being Demna, but I do feel like child abuse was supposed to be, like, I feel like it was on the mood board. Also, if you guys don't know, BDSM stands for bondage, domination, sadism, masochism, and it's very rooted in the giving and taking of power, which child abuse also has its roots in because you have a very clear power dynamic with someone who is more intentional and understanding of what they're doing and somebody who really has no choice but to submit because of fear resources um physical 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 power so i think for me it's just it crossed so many lines and that's what brings me to my next point which is as a community now how do we all move forward because i think that that part is not so black and white you know what happens to the people who really thought that demna was an icon of the times and he certainly is i mean he changed fashion like whether you move forward from this completely removing him from your atmosphere of, of even thinking about you know like he changed fashion so what happens to the people who felt like this was you know like a once in a generation a once in a decade designer that have a wardrobe filled with beautiful like archival pieces from his collection are those things worthless now are they not allowed to wear those things or love those things does that love disappear because of something that somebody else did you know i personally own a little bit of balenciaga and i even have this hoodie that was on my wish list for like a year now and i was finally gonna get it and that order is canceled now but like i'm still on the fence of like well i've i've been wanting this i've been loving this like truly from the bottom of my heart from a genuine place like every time i went to the boutique and i tried this on my heart was just like singing you know and now it's like when i talk about it i'll get a message about how like that's not okay and it's like, what's not okay? Like, the love that I have for this garment is, like, not okay anymore, you know? Sorry. I keep touching my hair because I hate the way it looks. <laughs> so do you sell your Balenciaga? Do you still wear your Balenciaga? Some people are even burning their Balenciaga, which I find, like, is it a form of activism? Like, obviously there is symbology. Symbology? I don't think that's a word. Symbolism. There is symbolism behind it, but at the same time, to me, it's a little bit cringe because it's like, if you're burning your Balenciaga or you're advocating to, you know, throw it away or it's canceled or it's done, some people literally, they work so hard, they save up thousands of dollars and now you're just like, well, 
Like, if you wear that, you may as well be waving a flag that says you advocate for the abuse of children. You know, you are the number one fan of pedophiles worldwide, which is crazy. Like, that is literally, like, you're insane. Like, you have a mental issue because it is not that black and white. Like, it is, it is not. It's really, it's not. So for the people who are burning their Balenciaga, I just find it to be like a little bit out of touch, you know? Like we're in this space right now, especially in the United States, where a lot of people are scaling back. A lot of people are being laid off. There is a recession incoming. A lot of people will be laid off after the holidays, you know, once all of the retail chains don't need their workers anymore, like you are going to get fired. And you have people on the internet burning like ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of bags and shoes and, and it like for what so that you can like make a statement and it's like you're literally burning cash like you're burning so much money on camera like i could never burn one of my babies like literally i will sing to my clothes i love them when they buy them and bring them home i have this whole welcome home ceremony and it's like i would never throw away my balenciaga clothing things are literally my kids so like Sorry, I'm just so heated because I'm like, how could you do that? How could you just... Did you ever even love that thing? Like, why did you buy it if you were so willing to burn it? Like, that's so crazy to me. Like, that is, like, mentally unstable. It's almost as mentally unstable as this hair that's on my head. <laughs> I, like, can't. I need a haircut. Oh, my God. Don't look at me. <laughs> to this, and whether you own Balenciaga or not, if you're in the fashion community, there's no escaping it. <clears throat> you probably know someone who owns a piece of Balenciaga. How do you handle that when they wear it? Like, how do we as a community move forward? How are you choosing to move forward? And, you know, just like, let me know, like, honestly, because I'm not trying to put out a statement of like, this is how we move forward. This is like Balenciaga is either canceled or not canceled. And like now, like, I want an open discussion of like how we progress and grow so yeah, thanks you guys for watching. This was a little bit of a different type of video for me, but I just feel like now that I'm trying more to engage and be a part of this like luxury fashion community, that this was a really important topic to give my two cents on. And I'm also realizing that like, you know, as I do try to have a more public voice, it is important to speak about things that that matter big issues like this that shouldn't be just swept under the rug like all of these celebrities are doing because they have such deep you know complicated relationships with the brand a lot of business relationships i mean that's why kim kardashian couldn't speak until like two weeks later because there are so many contracts in place that it's like well we need to figure out the legality of what you can and can't say um, and I don't have any contracts with anyone, but if y'all want to change that, I am here to be sponsored, hired, pay for this haircut because you know she needs it. You know she needs it. And yeah, so if you guys like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Engagement is engagement. And I will see you on the next video, which will probably be a lot more of an easier experience. I will have a haircut and... I will see you next time. Goodbye.